Sean with face down here, and we're with one of the members of Motionless and White, and you are? I'm Chris. And what do you do? I sing. Now, uh, what made you guys uh, decide to call yourself Motionless and White, and why did you pick the 18 Vision song to be your band name? Um, we, when we were looking, like, we started out with uh, another band name, and uh, the only two actually original members that are left are me and our drummer, Angelo, and um, when we were looking for a new name, we, you know, we're still pretty young in the band, like, we were just starting. Um, we kind of wanted to have a name of something that, you know, inspired us or, like, really was a reason that we are you know, making the band or continuing the band on, and, uh, we wanted the name to reflect on, you know, what influenced us, and, uh, you know, 18 Visions was a huge band for us at that time, and, uh, Motionless and White just kind of, like, I don't know why it just stuck out to us, and I, I don't know, we went with that. Now, how did it come about, uh, when... Love Meant Destruction and uh, getting signed to Tragic Hero Records all at the same time. It's kind of like a shock to you guys. Yeah, I mean, we we uh, we were signed to like a smaller label called Masquerade Recordings in the beginning, and then um, through that, like you know, we, we were able to get on Warped Tour, fortunately, and then we got you know got noticed by uh, the Aru Foundation, and then like within like a week, it was we had we had when Love Meant Destruction finished at the time, so it was like we had it. You know, we signed with Artery, and then, then in like a week, they, we found out that Freeless wanted to sign us, so it was kind of just like, like, whoa, what's happening? And then, I mean, it was everything that we, you know, we wanted to happen, but wasn't really expecting that it would just happen out of nowhere, so it was really awesome, and still really awesome. And then also when uh, when Love Met Destruction came out, um, Frank Palumbo decided to leave the band. Uh, what was the reasoning behind that? Um, when we, I, I think he, like, Frank left the band like a little bit after the when all that destruction came out it was just you know different interests of things like you know he not so much into the style of music anymore like just kind of grew out of it like he was one of the original members and uh you can tell like there was just a distance from him from the rest of us so we kind of you know we we talked to him and that was you know, part of ways but i mean it wasn't in a bad way or anything like it was you know there was not no, bad no fighting or no now your current album, Creatures, which by the way is pretty kick-ass, uh, what is the inspiration and story behind that album? Um, I mean, the, the whole the whole record is about you know different things that are going on. Um, you know, personally for me, like whether it's not I have you know an issue with something or you know I, my per, you know my personal issues with uh, relationships or heartbreak, if you will, as cliche as it is. Um, it's just it, it's kind of like. You know, we named it Creatures because, you know, what we do with our band is, is very fan, fan-oriented. fan Like, you know, we try to incorporate our fans into everything that we do in this band. And, um, which is why, I don't, know, I don't know if you're aware that we did one of the songs where all the fans wrote the lyrics. Oh, um, yeah, one of the songs, like, all the lyrics are written by our fans. So, so the name Creatures came about by just, you know, kind of giving ourselves a name of our group. Not, uh, not us, but, like, you know, the group of fans and us as a band as a whole and that's what creatures is to us um the songs are you know about many different things but what really was awesome for me is that creep the song creatures is the song that was written by all the fans and um a lot of the lyrics that i got were you know a lot of the same same stuff as i would write so it was really awesome to see that something that i was doing for fans you know because i know that people go through the same stuff as i do other people were you know right back telling me in their lyrics like you know we it's the same thing for us, so it was really it was really awesome to, to see, you know, how much it coincided with our fans. And sweet. Now your single "London and Terror" made its premiere on the uh, horror film website Fearnet. Uh, how did that come about? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember when that was. I think it was just, uh, you know, through through Fearless uh, helping us out with our marketing and with our you know, advertising to other websites and everything, they yeah, kind of... We, we do a lot of work with Fearless, yeah, those guys are amazing. They're awesome. They, they know how to get the job done. Yes. Um, it just kind of came about, like, Fearnet, I guess, you know, heard of us through Fearless, and then they just, you know, I guess they took an interest in us and just decided to feature us and everything when the stuff came out, so which is really awesome, because they've been good to us. Now, um, I, I was reading in an article that you guys claim your album creatures for anyone who has ever gotten problems with the way they look, dress, or what they listen to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Really, really anything like, you know, people go through a lot of stuff in their life, like, you know, getting shit for 
all that stuff that you mentioned or you know they go through really hard times in their life with you know family or relationships and stuff and you know I, I'm, I'm not really ashamed to write about that kind of kind of stuff like a lot of bands try purposely to stray away from writing songs that people could relate to just because they'll look, you know they'll be looked down upon for taking that route but I, I don't you know I, I couldn't imagine writing anything else that didn't have anything to do with something that was completely honest and sincere like I'm not gonna fucking write songs about partying and banging groupies and shit like fuck that you know I, I'd rather I'd rather write songs that people can read the message and get something out of it and you know have have a realization that they're not alone you know that's, that's what we do nice now how was it playing the Vans Warped Tour in 2010 and uh, I heard some rumors that you guys may be playing the Warped Tour for this year as well yeah uh, last year was Unfortunately, it was only four days out of, you know, on the whole tour, but the four days were pretty awesome because we got to play on the Kevin Said stage, which is really awesome. I said really awesome about 30 times. <laughs> really awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, this this year, we, I don't know the exact dates, but I know that we have 10, and they're all, unfortunately, on the East Coast. I said this in a previous interview that, uh, that if uh, anybody's watching this, it is only East Coast, so... I'm sorry, West Coast, but yeah, some people, oh, we, even though I said that, people are still like, are you guys coming to California? I'm just like, just East Coast. <laughs> but it's going to be awesome either way, it's Warp Tour is you know, the best tour you can be on. Yeah, and uh, the lineup for Warp Tour this year is pretty, pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like all the bands are gigantic. I kind of feel bad for the, you know, the bands like us who are on the smaller stages, because all the headlining bands are so big that I don't, you know, like, are people even going to stray away from the main stage to see the other bands, but right. it's cool either way. Now, also, being a band, uh, you guys have been around since 2005, and uh, pretty much you still have your original lineup, minus the departure of, of uh, Palumbo. How hard has it been, you know, keeping your original lineup? Not, once, you know, once we found all the guys that we have that are in the band now, um, it's just, you know, we are, you know, emotionless and white, like, I, I can't really imagine having to find anybody else than what's in the band now because we're all finally in tune with each other. We're finally, you know, a solid band. There's no more people that are going to be missing. I mean, unless somebody decides to quit randomly, right. which would suck, but, uh, I mean, it's, it's finally solid. It's not happy. Now, any crazy fan or tour stories you'd like to share? There's, there's a lot. <laughs> um, uh, every time anybody asks me about this um my personal story i mean we've we've had fans want us to sign like crazy stuff or you know you go through meeting people that are just their personalities are really animated so they're, they're kind of like funny to deal with um for me it's it's i really wouldn't even say that it's crazy it's just kind of like uh like i don't i don't get it um when when you go down in the front to like get in kids faces and sing along and like you know, be there to hold hand, like not hold hands, but you know, like whatever, uh, get in their face and stuff. They decide that, oh, he's here. Let's rip his clothes. Let's tear all of his personal things off of him. Like, it's it's kind of no different than if somebody like walked up in our RV and stole anything, stole something out of one of our bins or you know whatever. Like, it, I don't get why people need to steal shit. I I I completely understand being excited and being, you know, in the moment and being like, oh my god, whatever, but don't, you know, don't destroy someone else's property, and that, that, that happens to me a lot, so I stopped going in the front because, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to have to keep, keep getting shit stolen or anything like that, so that's about as crazy as, that, as it gets for me, which really isn't that crazy. Now, uh, you guys are a part of Fearless Records, uh, which we do a lot of work with, I love you, Fearless. Um, how does it feel to be a part of that family? Uh, I mean, I, I've said this before, you know, in past interviews, like, the reason why we're Fearless is because they're the only label, you know, in the independent music scene that that really, like, signs bands like us, or, you know, in, in our, you know, smaller independent genre, I'll call it, that uh, really didn't have, like, a, a rap sheet for being, uh, rip, you know, ripping off their bands, or, you know, they... they they, they have a good reputation, and I now know why, because they take care of their bands, they do everything that, that they're supposed to do, there's no cheating, there's no lying, there's no, uh, there's, there, there's no, I don't know, I don't want to say another record label and, you know, start shit, but you hear all these stories about, like, Victory Records and ripping, ripping bands off and stuff, and it is 100% true, 
and uh, Fearless has never had that that rap, and that's why we went with them. And we're fortunate enough that they're the label that extended their hand to us. Definitely. And last but not least, what does the future hold for you guys? Uh, you gotta have a new album, any more tours, working on any music videos. What can your fans expect? Uh, yeah, we're after we get home from this tour, uh, we're holding off for like ten days before we go to our next tour. Uh, in that time, we're doing uh, another video for uh, the song Creatures. And um, I don't really know what it's going to be about yet, or what, what the video is going to be like yet, but we're doing that, and then uh, the 10 Days of Warp Tour in the summer, and then we have another pretty pretty awesome tour coming up in the summer with like a lot of bands. It's like a festival tour, but not Warp Tour. Um, so there's that, and then uh, I, I don't think I can really say anything past that, but it's definitely some big stuff that we're really excited about, but that's, that's for the whole rest of the year. Definitely. Thank you, man. It was definitely a pleasure. You guys need to check out Motionless and White. These guys kick ass.